So the Restrictions tab is going to hold all of the information that controls when and how participants access my quiz. The first option, Quiz Status, um, remember that students are only able to see active quizzes, so marking your quiz as inactive will hide it completely from the student. Now unfortunately, this is not a setting that you can automate, so if you do choose to keep your quiz inactive for a period of time, you must come in here and manually switch it to active before the students are able to see it. Um, if you are planning on setting date and time parameters, you're going to need to complete the date section. And remember that the start and end dates of a quiz control the start quiz button. So this is the uh, window of time where a student can begin an assessment. So if you're going to use a start date, first you have to click the Has Start Date checkbox and then you'll select a date and time. Now, D2L will give you time in 30 minute increments, but if you want a time that does not fall within that range, you can simply type it in. So many of my instructors will um, want to do maybe 11.59 p.m. or something like that. So you can type in any time in the time box. Likewise, if you want to add an end date to your quiz, so an end date will take away the option for the start quiz button. You'll need to select the has end date checkbox and then, of course, select a date and time that the participant will be able to last begin the quiz. The start and end dates do not control a quiz's time limit. These dates simply control the availability of that start quiz button, allowing your students to begin the assessment. You can create release conditions that control which criteria the student must satisfy in order for D2L to release the quiz to the student. I'm not going to be adding release conditions here, but you can view the release conditions video located within the content playlist in this YouTube channel for more information about release conditions. The security options section of the restrictions tab contains the settings that connect a D2L assessment to the Respondus Lockdown browser. So this Respondus Lockdown browser is trying to simulate a proctored test environment. It's going to lock down the single computer that the student is using to access the assessment. If you plan on requiring your students to use the Logdown Browser, it's always a good practice to set up maybe a sample quiz or a practice quiz so that your students can get acclimated with how to download and use the Respondus Logdown Browser outside of a graded quiz window. If you are going to require that your students use this, you're going to need to check the Required to Take This Quiz checkbox. And that's going to require students to download and use the Respondus Lockdown Browser to both log on to D2L and access your quiz. You can also choose to um, force the students to use the Lockdown Browser to see their quiz results and feedback. If you're going to use that option, you'll need to check the second box. You don't have to select either of these boxes, however. If you do not see any additional restriction settings, you'll need to click the Expand Optional Advanced Restrictions hyperlink. And this section is going to hold the settings that allow you to set up a quiz password and specify an IP range. You can create a case-sensitive password that students or test proctors must enter in order to gain access to the quiz. Now, note that the password is case-sensitive, so whatever you type in here the first time is going to be your password, so you'll need to, to be careful when typing or entering in your password for the quiz. I'm not going to enter a password for my quiz here, so I'm just going to scroll past that. The IP restriction setting is going to allow you to restrict your students to a specific IP range. So what this means is if you set up or type in a range here, your students must be in a particular location before they will be able to start the quiz. Now, most often this setting is used if you're going to be using our testing center located in the shared library, and they have a static IP range. So what that means is that IP address will not change. It's static, unchanging, permanent. Be careful when you're entering an IP range because I want you to ensure that the IP range that you do enter is static and unchanging. Otherwise, students will not be able to access your exam. I'm not going to be setting up an IP range here, so I'm going to scroll past that. And then I want to land on the time limit option. So you need to type in the total number of minutes a student has to complete the quiz once it's been started. Um, after you enter a time limit, you'll also need to make sure that the enforced checkbox is selected. Otherwise, your test will be untimed. After you click 
the enforce checkbox, you're also able to select whether or not you want to display the clock to the student. So this is going to basically show a clock that counts down the time that the student has remaining inside of the quiz. If you choose to set a time limit, you also need to set a grace period. A grace period is the total number of minutes after time has passed before the quiz is flagged as late. The grace period must be at least one minute. And after you've selected or entered a time limit and a grace period, you'll need to consider what you want to happen once time has expired for a student. And these late submission options will control how D2L handles a quiz attempt once that time has expired. You've got three options. The first option is the default, and it's called allow normal submission. So what that means is once a quiz time expires for a student, D2L will alert the student that time has expired, but then will allow the student to continue taking the assessment. Now, on the instructor side, you'll still see that the student exceeded the time limit or spent more time in the exam than you had allotted, and you can make the, uh, the decision on how to handle that situation. But basically, it's just a notification that alerts the student that time has expired with no penalty. You can select the use late limit, and what this means is students must complete the assessment or submit the quiz by the time limit that you set plus the late limit. So, for example, if my time limit was 60 minutes and I had a late limit of 5 minutes, after 65 minutes, if the student had not submitted the quiz, that student would automatically earn a zero. Now, I can go back and change this grade manually, but just know that if you do use this late limit, D2L will automatically assign a zero as the quiz grade if the student exceeds the time limit. The third option, Auto Submit Attempt. Unlike its name, it will not auto-submit a student's attempt, but what it will do is alert the student that time has expired and then freeze the quiz progress. So the only thing that the student has the ability to do is submit the quiz. Now this is an option that will definitely ensure that the student takes no longer than, let's say, 60 minutes on your quiz, but it's still up to the student to submit the quiz. And on the instructor side of things, you may see that quizzes are late, but just know that the student will have not been able to answer any additional questions or go back and change any other answers past that 60 minute time limit. So I'm going to select auto submit attempt here. Once I scroll down here, I'm actually going to click the save button. And the reason being is I want to make sure that D2L saves all of the settings that I've entered on my restrictions tab before I consider this special access section. So I'm gonna click save. And special access is reserved if you have students that need some sort of accommodation. So for example, a student's going to be out of town and he or she has worked with you to set up an alternate quiz date. To add students to special access, what you want to do first is ensure that this first checkbox is selected. And what this is going to do is it's going to hold the entire class list accountable for the dates that you just set on the restrictions tab and then for a particular number of students, hold them accountable to a different set of dates and time limits. So you can also use special access if a student is going to require a little bit more time on a quiz. So after I have selected the first radio button, I need to click the Add Students to Special Access button. And this is going to bring me to a screen where I set up an alternate start and end date an alternate time limit, an alternate password, all of these restrictions that we saw on the restrictions tab. Uh, what you're looking at now is student specific restrictions. So set the appropriate restrictions and then select the students that this, these special restrictions will apply to. After you've done that, you'll click save and return back to the restrictions tab of our edit quiz page.